Uh, gender studies is the softest of all the soft subjects, and I speak of softness not in the sense of a feminist belly or male feminist genitals, but in the sense that, oh, come on. You ever, have, you, have you seen any of these guys? These, like, limp-wristed, bespectacled gawker bloggers. Do you think any of them has ever had an erection? <laughs> in their lives. My God. Closest they've come to boning something is, like, jerking off to anime. Like, give me a break. <laughs> they want everyone to be as miserable as they are. They want to police your sex life so your sex life becomes as boring as theirs. That's where social justice comes from. It's people just wanting to spread the misery around. <sighs> they don't put much work into the quality of their scholarship in gender studies departments. Um, because anyone who questions, they don't need to, in fact. They don't need to work hard because if you question their methods, you are, of course, guilty of, say it with me, being a member of the patriarchy. Uh, it is this sort of all-encompassing, we'll get to this in a second, an all-encompassing explanation for everything. Um, there's some precedent for this in culture. Feminists are, as I like to say, like the Borg in Star Trek. Um, they don't know anything about anyone else except that they must be assimilated at all costs and destroyed if they don't conform. They, uh, they have a hive mind that mindlessly follows the orders of a queen, in this case some sort of disgusting amalgam of Lena Dunham, Amy Schumer, Hillary Clinton, and Justin Trudeau. <laughs> now, Anita, Sarke Anita Sarkeesian, um, her career never really took off, um, I'm sorry to say. To break it to you, the horrible news that Anita Sarkeesian is sinking into oblivion, where she fucking belongs, um, because she is even less talented than the rest of them. Um, resistance, in this case, is not futile. Um, because we're beating them, we're winning. We are, we are species eight four seven two. For any any Star Trek Voyager fans in the audience, <laughs> we still, I've outed myself. Um, we see a similar attitude among journalists about guns. By the way, have you ever noticed? Um, you know, every, any gun that's ever used in any attack ever is either an AR fifteen or a Glock. That's all they know. That's all they know. It's like any, anything that happens anywhere ever. Anything, any handgun that ever used you, you check the New York Times and they'll call it a Glock. Anything bigger, doesn't matter what it is, you could be beating somebody to death with a, with a shin bone or your, own, your, or your own erection and they will call it, or they will call it an assault rifle. Because this, you know, gun culture, America's evil gun culture, the Second Amendment, is as blunt an instrument and as idiotic an explanation for some of the complex and difficult to understand things that go on in American culture, as the patriarchy is an explanation for why some women's lives suck. The Democrats, Kellogg's, Pepsi, they all do the same thing. They all call you deplorables. Uh, they call you all sorts of things, actually. They call you white supremacists, they call you anti semites they call you all kinds of things. Uh, most of... You know, <laughs> I'm mean, actually, you know what, I'm going to up the Milo factor here. I'm going to do something we've never done before. Um, we're going to watch a clip of a Milo talk during a Milo talk. Um, we're go <laughs> well, I have to sit through this. I have the Milo suction. There we go. Actually, maybe on Monday I'll play the clip of this. And then, <laughs> and then Wednesday I'll play the clip of Monday playing the clip of this playing this clip. That was a little shorter than I intended. Anyway, anyway, anyway. It's all about blaming somebody else when things go wrong. That's really just a primer. I'm setting myself up for a joke in about seven lectures' time. Sorry I had to sit through that. Um, right. Smarter people than me call these kind of ready-made, pur purpose-made, kind of all-encompassing ex excuses. They call them um, the external locus of control. You'll sometimes hear about this. If any of you um, were stupid enough to choose a social sciences course instead of a real subject, uh, or... <laughs> Or any major ending in the word studies. What was that? What? Women and gender studies. Yeah, any of those things. Um, anything ending in studies, just, just go home. Such a waste of money. You are going to graduate dumber than when you arrived. You are going to graduate believing more things that aren't true than when you got here. You're going to graduate less well equipped to deal with the real world than when you got here. You're going to graduate less well adjusted with 
more childish emotional responses to things and less able to rationally interrogate data and come to reasonable conclusions than you were when you arrived at college. If you are doing one of those courses ending in studies, just leave. Go home. Do something more useful with your life. Now, this external locus of control is different for different people, of course, and the right is not completely, uh, completely excused from this. For Alex Jones fans, there's the New World Order. Uh, for feminists, of course, the patriarchy. And for everybody, everybody has their own one of these. You know, for leftists at the moment, it's the alt-right. Um, you know, there's, there's this vast network of, of white supremacist, anti-Semite, racist, sexist, homophobic, bigoted people, and yet somehow the head of it is a race-mixing kike faggot. I don't get it, but um, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Something's not quite right there, um, but, but whatever. Um, for everybody has their own version of this, of this garbage. But for feminists, it is the patriarchy. Um, it's a conspiracy at all levels of Western civilization designed to turn women's lives, uh, and, uh, to, to control women's lives and to hold them down. Um, they never accuse the Middle East of these things, by the way. You'll never hear feminists talking about Islamic patriarchy. These are countries that um, really do oppress women. And they're countries that, you know, Obama and had, had she won <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Um, no, I feel comfortable doing that because this is a woman who takes hundreds of millions of dollars from countries that execute gays while pandering to them back home. Fuck her. <laughs> there are cultures, there are cultures out there with systemic problems when it comes to their attitude to women. But America is not one of those countries. No, America is not one of those cultures. It's interesting that um, but this is how you know, really, that it's a sort of um, it's a sort of conspiracy theory and and a scapegoat, and it's not based on rational inquiry or rational analysis. Because if it were, feminists would look at um, what happened in Orlando. Feminists would look at what happens when you import in Germany two million Syrian migrants, um, with the result that was it 1,200 women were sexually assaulted uh, in Cologne on New Year's Eve, and they would look at, uh, with horror at these cultures. They would support people like Ayan Hirsi Ali. But they don't, because they're not interested in reason or logic or facts. They're interested in beating down on straight white men. That's how you know this is about identity politics, not rationality. Practical terms, the patriarchy is a crutch feminists use to excuse their own personal failings. It's not their fault they can't get a date. It's the patriarchy. It's not their fault they can't get a job. It's the patriarchy. Considering the weight of feminists, it's a good job. It's only a metaphorical crutch, because the real kind of oh, stop it. Stop it. It wasn't that funny. Um, the real kind aren't going to support their weight much longer. Feminists even blame the patriarchy for making maths difficult. They say that science and maths has a patriarchal bias. It's real. It's real. <laughs> um, and for not liking obese people. For not holding people to account for their own life choices. That is the result not of their failure to discipline themselves, but yours for not loving them no matter what they look like. And who could love Amy Schumer? Feminists, uh, uh, well look, let's just say, the patriarchy for feminism is everything and nothing at the same time. We don't see radical feminists yet accusing each other of being part of the patriarchy, but that is only a matter of time. They are, like all communists, uh, uh, inevitably going to turn on each other. And in fact, feminists have been catfighting and infighting for decades. Um, and like communists, accusing each other of betraying the glorious revolution, 2017, I predict, is, is, is likely to bring charges of internalized patriarchy. That, that's what I think is going to be the new trend on college campuses. Internalized patriarchy which is going to be leveled by feminists at each other. And you can already start to see it happen um, with sort of racial elements to this. You know, um, uh, white feminists being um, sort of ostracized from the cool club because they don't have enough oppression points. Um, somehow they are still the product of white supremacy. Um, I can't wait to see that. Imagine the facial expressions the poor girls uh, uh, are going to make. Now, uh, make no mistake, third wave, do you know her? Do you know her? Big Red, yeah, you see your very well-educated audience. This is Big Red. Yeah, she's wonderful. You should look her up or just, just Google Big Red. You can't miss her. Um, <laughs> Make no mistake, if third wave feminism precisely defined the patriarchy, it would destroy their movement. The majority of Americans and Europeans would recognize it's actually everything that makes their countries great. What I suggest to you this evening is that what feminists allude to as the patriarchy is in fact Western civilization. The things that they hate the most, 
are the things that make this country in particular great, the things that make this country one of the greatest countries, if not the greatest country in the history of human civilization. The things... <laughs> the things that make this country great, capitalism, democracy, property rights, freedom of speech and freedom of expression, these are the things that feminists hate um, for reasons of their own tortured logic and identity politics. These are the things that actually keep women safe. These are the things that make America the best possible, imaginable place to be born if you are gay or black or a woman. Now on campuses where liberal softies still rule with an iron fist, feminism is as safe as a city with no women drivers. Um, which, is, which is the only... Which is the... It's actually the only good thing about Saudi Arabia. Uh, the road... The, um, som sometimes you can arrive at the right conclusion for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, their road traffic statistics must be the envy of the world. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't looked them up. I'm sure, that, I'm sure they're great. And now, it was once thought that if feminists were to take over the world, there'd be immediate global nuclear war after the way they treat each other. We all know how women treat each other in the office. We know how women treat each other in their own friendship groups. But of course, uh, the smallest of things, you know, not retweeting a selfie fast enough could have led to some sort of thermonuclear explosion. Uh, but now I recognize that feminists in their eternal quest to find someone else to blame are far too passive-aggressive for nukes. They'd rather destroy Western civilization by importing murderous barbarians from the Middle East or teaching boys that masculinity is evil and cuckoldry is noble. Now, we've looked, at the we've looked at the patriarchy and feminist point of view. I want to look at it from my point of view, from your point of view, I, I, I would like to hope. I switch gears and we'll look at the patriarchy from a non-psychotic and more rational place. The patriarchy, to put it simply, is how the West works. It's how the West has worked very effectively. Now, the patriarchy and Western civilization are inseparable. The patriarchy is the idea that people can achieve their best if they work hard. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, what color or gender or sexuality you are. If you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. And because it's rooted in science and reality, the patriarchy, of course, believes that, yes, there are only two genders. Um, the patriarchy says your potential is not based on your identity, but instead the talents you were born with and what, to what lengths you will go to achieve greatness. The patriarchy has resulted in almost everything important and impressive about America, including this college campus. In 50 years, after most of today's feminists have died from complications related to obesity, they're right... They're right... I speak the truth. I speak the truth. Um, <laughs> Their writing and thinking will be relegated to the backwaters of study if they are remembered at all. But the United States Constitution, the Magna Carta, and if I may humbly say my book, which is going to be out in 2017, um, which I just signed a deal for, I'll let you know about that in December, um, they will be studied and taught at length. Well, maybe not my book on campus, unless a lot has changed by then. But the patriarchy doesn't value men over women. In fact, the patriarchy favors women. The claims by feminists are entirely fictitious. Men are the primary casualties of war, the vast majority of suicides. Everyone killed on the job is a man. Um, there's actually a death gap. Um, talk about the wage gap. I mean, you know, supposing you care. Do you, do you know why the wage gap is bullshit, by the way? Does anyone need an explanation? Are there any feminists in the room still laboring under the misapprehension they might get paid less for the same work? Does anyone actually believe that? Is anyone dumb enough to believe that in this room? No, good. Um, well, basically, probably, most of you probably know, if you take all the money earned by women and all the money earned by men and you just divide it, then you get a sort of 77% you know, or whatever, which doesn't, of course, take into account all the different life choices that women make, the fact they have to have babies. Um, the, diff the different life choices really is where um, you know, serious economists have to, read th have to take into account this stuff. And a, ha a female Harvard economist this year tried desperately, taking all relevant factors into account, to find a gender pay gap and couldn't find one about 2 to 3% by the end of it, which is more than accommodated by the fact that men pay so much more into the tax system and take so much less out. So it's garbage, complete garbage. Um, but there is a death gap. The death gap is real. Um, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that men make up 92% of workplace deaths. And there are other um, government uh, studies that show, I think, 97% of workplace fatalities when you include the military and everything like that. That's real gender inequality. Um, this is, um, just look at this tiny imperceptible little slice of pink. 92% of uh, people, men who go to work looking actually not very much like this. Um, <laughs> men who go to work... <laughs> you know... What? Well, thank you. I don't know why I've ended up with a, a, a hairdryer and mace. Um, 
I think somebody thought it's a very nice purse model. Stream spray pattern up to five bursts, 10 foot in range. Five bursts, that's not going to get through very many marauding lesbianic feminist assailants, is it? <laughs> five bursts. Well, you, you see, I need, I need mace that will stop a rhino. <sighs> right. Now, beyond dying, uh, men also do the dirty jobs. They get the short end of the stick in family court. There's a, you know, people get mean about men's rights activists, and, and, and I have some sympathy with their criticisms because there are, you know, some of the more prominent men's rights activists aren't the sort of p people that you necessarily want to, to, to have supper with. They can, can be autistic weirdos. Um, but, but they're basically right about everything. Not everything. I mean, I think, you know, they, they don't like me very much because I'm pro-circumcision. And I always tell them, well, you don't have to suck the thing, you know. Um, but <laughs> ask, your, ask your wife what she thinks. Uh, of course, many of them only have ex-wives. Um, but <laughs> but the, the, the reality is that a lot of what the men's rights activists talk about, if you go onto the red pill or whatever, um, many of them are right about pretty much everything. Um, because the... What, what gender inequalities there were in society have flipped, and very recently, um, to, to, to favor women. If there is a patriarchy in action, it is doing a very bad job to look after male interests. Um, women make up less than 1%, less than 1% in the following professions. Boiler makers, brick masonry, septic tank servicing, sewer pipe cleaners, and trash collectors. Amazing that we've never heard about that horrible gender inequality. Nobody's ever written, nobody, <laughs> nobody has ever written an angry column from The Guardian about the fact that there are no female septic tank operators. And if they have, I must have missed it. Nobody has ever written an angry column about the fact that there are too few heterosexual men on fragrance counters. But there obviously is. Uh, there are complaints when the glamorous, well-paid jobs go to men. Well, ladies, the number one thing you can do if you want to improve your chances in life is change your major to a real subject. The majority of women who complain about this stuff are women studying gender studies. If you are upset about the number of women in STEM, go study engineering and fix it. Patriarchy doesn't mind, of course, that the vast uh, majority of nurses and veterinary med uh, medics who are paid, I mean, vets are paid almost as much as doctors uh, in some cases, and they require just as much, if not more, training. If there's, if there's a conspiracy in the patriarchy to keep women down, to exclude them from physics and maths and astrophysics and all that kind of stuff, you have to explain why there isn't one to keep women out of biology and veterinary medicine and nursing. And there doesn't seem to be a very good explanation. No one's ever been able to, to explain to me why it is that the patriarchy selectively excludes people, ex excludes women from just some sciences. Could it be a more reasonable explanation? Let us employ Occam's razor. Could it be, in fact, that women simply make different life choices to men and they stubbornly refuse to do the things that feminists would like them to? It seems more likely to me. Feminism is, in fact, about taking options and agency away from women. It wants to force women into subjects they don't want to study. It wants to suggest to women they should have lifestyles that don't make them happy. Feminism has um, affected almost every area of, of public life, of culture, society, and politics over the last 50 years. And many of the things that it achieved, we should be very proud of and very pleased. We should be very proud that women have the same access that men do to the institutions of higher education, to the workplace. We should be very proud that they have the vote and all of the things. And it you know, sounds silly to say it in 2016, but they don't everywhere. And they didn't even here until relatively recently. We should be hugely proud of ourselves that we have um, led the way in the world here in the West, you know, the UK, America, these sorts of countries, in female emancipation. We should be proud of that. But we shouldn't necessarily be proud of the last couple of decades of feminism, which has driven the sexes apart and encouraged women to make life choices that don't make them happy. Telling women they can have it all. They can be the CEO of a multinational corporation and have babies. Well, they can't. There are biological barriers in some cases to these things. And in any case, women simply make different choices. Very often, what all of the studies show us, what all of the data suggests, 
is that women seek, com seek uh, happiness in a more holistic way. They like a better balanced life. They, want, you know, they don't want to work the long hours that men do. And that's partly dictated by hormones and biology. And, you know, in order to make these arguments that the, the, ge the genders are equal, and, and, and well, I say uh, equal, they make the argument that the genders are identical to erode the difference between men and women, feminists have had to start to, to deny basic scientific reality, biological fact, to discount hormones from their discussion of how the sexes differ. This stuff is nuts. And when you force women into choices that they don't really want to make, they end up miserable. And that's why every single decade, and every study says the same thing, every single decade since the Second World War, women have been getting more and more and more miserable. Cannot be totally unconnected to the rise of feminism in society. It cannot be unconnected. Um, any woman who did not support Hillary Clinton at the last election was branded an internalized misogynist, even crazy lefties like Susan Sarandon. Um, why does being a woman define what women must do and how they must vote? This is modern feminism in action, reducing women's choices, not enlarging them. Speaking of Hillary, she mentioned some of my articles in one of her low-energy campaign speeches. Um, and one of my favorite recent headlines was how to make women happy, uninvent the washing machine and the pill. Now, some people were a bit upset with me for this. Um, suggested that this was the product of, um, of, of misogyny. And there's a particular kind of gay misogyny that we get accused of. Um, I, I like to think that because I don't have skin in the game, I can sort of look dispassionately and rationally and factually at the, at the gender wars. Um, but other people say, oh, because you're gay, you've got, um, you know, you've got the worst kind of misogyny. Um, but I was just trying, I was just, <laughs> well, you don't even want to fuck us. Um, <laughs> Is it, 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 actually, in fact, there is, there are, um, I, I forget the name now, there is, a, there is a feminist scholar who believes that homosexuality is just a, is the ultimate expression of misogyny. Um, you hate women so much that you go and have sex with other men. Um, uh, <laughs> but I was trying to look, I mean, in this article, I was trying to look rationally at why women are becoming so miserable. My conclusions were that um, entering the workplace in such large numbers whilst um, you know, still having all of the pressures of, of, of the sort of maternal instinct wasn't making women happy. My other conclusion um, was that women being told by feminism, being taught to behave sexually, in a sexually promiscuous way, like men are supposed to do, and often don't really, was making them miserable too. So I suggested that we should uninvent one machine um, because the washing machine is, is, you know, is really the, the, the where society starts to go wrong. Um, when women were liberated to go and join the workforce, I'm kidding, by the way, with most of this, but uh, when women, were, when women were, were liberated to go and join the workforce, they started to get miserable. That's the reality. They started to get less happy, even though they were, on the face of it, freer. Um, and when, um, you know, and when they, when they, the, the sexual revolution, similarly, they started to get less happy when they could, when they were encouraged by feminists to behave like boys. Well, the point of this article is that inventions like the washing machine and the pool were designed to force women that might have chosen to be homemakers into the workforce. That's what they were supposed to do. They removed women's agency in a very unpatriarchal manner. Well, why has Western civilization declared war on the housewife? This is something I've always wondered. It's not a new phenomenon, but it is one of my own deepest questions. Most likely, they want to do to the family what they did to Europe, which is turning into an unrecognizable shithole full of bodily waste and garbage. Um, the patriarchy recognizes that anyone, male or female, will be miserable if forced into a role they are not suited for. This is borne out by evidence. Of course, women should not be forced to stay home or keep house. But many of them want to. And feminism tells them there is something defective with them for loving the family, for, for wanting to be a mother, and to be a homemaker. That is profoundly wrong. And, by the way, profoundly sexist. Now, I often use America's trips to the moon as one of the pinnacle examples of patriarchy. And um, feminists argue that I'm wrong about this. Um, uh, now, feminists argue that the reason women are underrepresented in space ex exploration is because there's a big, bad patriarchy constantly telling them they can't be astronauts and they should be housewives instead. Well, pop culture's never given us any female astronauts as role models. That's why we had to watch Sandra Bullock in space screaming like a total cunt for two hours. <sighs> Perhaps the patriarchy will one day get us to Mars too. When it does, it will be because the patriarchy, the system I described, that of aspiration, values, of self-reliance instead of victimhood and, I and identity politics and grievance mongering, um, will be the thing that got us there, not whining like a cunt. Um, <laughs> I mean, imagine if the survivor in The Martian was a male feminist. He'd probably write a Tumblr post about how he's making Mars a better place by ridding it of its last straight white male. Uh, he'd wish... 
He'd wish both his wife and her new boyfriend a good future on earth and promptly kill himself. Now, in a recent issue, in a recent interview, I brought up the moon landing, and shortly afterwards, I received an email that told me that it wasn't the patriarch, it was also Margaret Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton, a great female, um, a brilliant woman, one of the great early computer programmers, probably far more interesting, far more influential, far more talented than Ada Lovelace, who we hear about endlessly, but actually did fuck all. Um, this woman is genuinely brilliant. Um, she played a key role in the Apollo program, including the programming that helped the astronauts reach the moon safely. Um, but she was part of the patriarchy. This is a concept that makes leftists faint dead away, but lots of women are part of the patriarchy. The majority of women believe in equality between the sexes, but don't identify as feminists, as we discovered a moment ago. Margaret Hamilton was part of the patriarchy. Why? Because she was the best in her field. Because she contributed to the highest caliber of work available. Her gender and identity were never part of the equation, only her skill. Do you think Margaret Hamilton ever put tape over her nipples and participated in a slut walk? Do you think, do you think she ever made art with period blood? Of course not. She's the type that would punch you in the mouth if you called her a female programmer instead of just a programmer. This is what a great feminist icon looks like. The reliance, the reliance and the, the focus on merit over identity is the patriarchy. It's your single sentence definition, but just like I said at the beginning, I wouldn't I mean, if I just said that at the beginning, rather, I wouldn't have got to listen to myself talk for 40 minutes. So um, the key thing I wanted to take away is that the, 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 the patriarchy is achievement, merit, and ambition divorced from identity. Girls, if you want to be like Margaret Hamilton, pick up a subject and never look back. But pick up a real subject. Don't pick up a subject that tells you lies. Pick up a subject that will teach you to do something, to be something, to build or create or contribute to something. Not a subject that only gives you the tools to whine about how shit your life is. Choose engineering. Choose physics. Choose maths. Choose a subject that actually means something. And then you will not just be complaining about supposed inequalities, but you will be doing something to fix them, and in this process, improving your own life. That is my message to young girls. That is my message to young women. My message to young women who would like one day to become like Margaret. It shouldn't surprise anyone that feminism simply doesn't work. I used to think if feminists ruled the world, we'd all be living in mud huts, but having seen how ineffective they were in the last election. I have doubts about them even be, being able to put the roof on a mud hut. Um, compare that, of course, with the patriarchy as exemplified by Donald Trump, who builds wonderful things. Trump's appointed women to some of the highest positions in his organization. In fact, the highest positions. Now that he is uh, president, women will be in charge of most of the top of all of his organizations. He's somebody who um, has demonstrated by doing, instead of saying, uh, where his values lie. Um, but the patriarchy isn't just about hiring. Uh, it's also uh, about masculinity. And to finish, I'd like to um, just quote a wonderful thing that I discovered, just to, you know, in case I haven't triggered the room enough yet. Um, Trump's new Secretary of Defense, uh, General Mad Dog Mattis. Do you know this guy? <laughs> yeah. He, um, this guy makes Clint Eastwood look like a Thai lady boy. Um, he's absolutely fucking amazing. He's so cis-hetero, he may as well double up as Secretary of the Patriarchy. Well, Mad Dog Mattis understands that national defense, like gender, is a binary.